Welcome to Playboy Magazine, July 1970. Uh, really nice cover for this month. Um, I'm really liking the kind of blue. Uh, it really stands out. Obviously, the imagery is quite provocative, um, which, as we are seeing in the 1970s, that's going to be a recurring thing. We have, uh, in this particular issue, the Dolls Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, uh, shaping up for new theatre, and Joan Bay's interview. Uh, we have the little Playboy bunny logo just here in the bubbles, uh, nicely concealed there, but I really like the front cover. This issue is a little bit smaller than usual, or what we've become, become accustomed to. Um, so 208 pages. Um, we'll start off with some of the things that you've seen before, some Smanoff vodka here. Magnavox is a new one. Um, I know the name. I don't know too much about the particular brand, but Magnavox is something that I've heard of before, and I think that's the first time it's appeared in Playboy magazine. So we get uh, Lee Jeans here. We've got the contents. Uh, Rich Man's Weather by Owen Shaw. We've got Project Survival by Jeffrey Norman. Uh, Shaping Up for Old Calcutta, pictorial essay C. Robert Jennings. Uh, some others that stand out, we've got a semester super driver U, uh, Ken W. Purdy, uh, Robert Townsend with further up the organization. Um, Thomas Mario, uh, conversation pieces, Robert L. Green with Denim Does It. Uh, so we'll head straight into the first few pages here Harley Davidson, Pub Cologne. Um, some letters coming in here, payment deferred. We've got sex in the classroom, so some of the usual topics. Um, the topics generally, you know, up to this point, there've been a lot of, um, sort of social justice based things, which of course in this era, there's so much turmoil, so much going on with wars. Um, so of course it's what we would expect. Lots of, uh, letters of course on sex. And then we have some J and B rare scotch here. Then we have, uh, this Jaguar advert. Uh, this car that makes Great Britain a great sports car power can make you one too. So this is Jaguar XKE. Just some comparisons with the 911E and the Mercedes-Benz 280 SL. Uh, got some record club deals there. Playboy After Hours. Uh, so the Playboy After After Hours is the um, kind of like a little bulletin board for all the things that are happening um, in and around Chicago at the time and other places. And then we have uh, Datsun gives you extras, others sell you. Uh, we've got some Goodrick tires. Here's your listings for various books that will come out this month. And of course we have music as well. Uh, Paul Jones there. Some whiskey. Yamaha. Um, catch 8000 RPM, fifth gear and a look of envy. Uh, all of the same time. Uh, Yeehaw, this is the Yamaha. What model is this? The 350 Street RS. Uh, so quite a nice looking bike. I think I, one of my neighbours may have had one of these when I was a bit younger, I'm not sure. Um, we have uh, Flishman's, the world's driest gin since 1870. And we've got some Croton. Some more posters here. Um, we've got some Seagram's Extra Dry Gin. The Avant Garde Sit-In. This is the Emporium. So lots of new things coming into the magazine. It feels a little bit more different now. There's a just a few things like this, for example, the, um, the kind of gimmicky things that you can buy. And these are common things that you'll see on eBay for sale uh, quite often. So all of these things are gradually creeping into the magazine. You've still got the usual stuff, like the hi-fis and stereos, video recorders, all the technological things, but a few more little um, licensed goodies that have crept up. Uh, the Playboy Advisor, some more letters coming in here. Various scenarios about dating. Um, and it's, there's this one here. Please tell me if the length of time it takes for the penis to become soft after orgasm is any measure of the extent of satisfaction in the male. It seems to vary greatly. And this is Miss D from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. What goes up must also come down, but nobody's figured out a time schedule. Um, and it's got delumescence, a normal post ejaculatory phenomenon occurs at varying arbitrary rates and is not a yardstick by which to reliably measure anything except perhaps age, the older the male, 
the more rapid he's at deuteminescence. Can't say that. Deuteminescence, I think that is. So, we'll move on. Um, we've got some more Playboy clothing for his and her, the Playboy uh, Golf, and we have Caesar's Palace. Uh, the MG Midget 70. Um, we've got the Playboy Forum. This is a uh, Playboy Mansion besieged. I've read newspaper reports that a band of women's liberations, liberationists noisily picketed Hefner's Mansion on April the 15th. The occasion was a fundraising party at the mansion sponsored by the Vietnam uh, Moratorium Committee, which was working toward the end of the war in Southeast Asia. Hefner apparently was kind enough to denote the use of his house for this trustworthy purpose. I'm a little confused by this demonstration and would like to hear your side of the story. If women's liberation groups are against the war, as they claim, and Hefner too is against the war, as he has said and shown many times, then why did these women pick this particular occasion to demonstrate against him? What a way to work for peace. And the response is basically that this group is um, quite extreme. Uh, it doesn't like Playboy, it doesn't like Hugh Hefner. There's lots of references to, you'll see the way it's spelled here, lots of K's in here as if, for some reason, Playboy is some kind of white supremacist magazine or in some way uh, racist or something like that. So you have these groups, even at this time, even when you're on the right side of things, they still hate you based on the other things that you kind of um, sort of look towards and uh, the ideals that you have, whether it's sex-based and they have these accusations of, uh, you know, Playboy kind of um, leering over women and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's an odd outlook and people can't just take things at face value and work with people who are trying to do good. It's uh, It really shows with these kind of extremist groups. More letters here. Um, so you've got six swingers, the ethics of swinging, uh, a washing communism. Um, so really a 70s um, typical issue, I think. Meet the softcore, and this is introducing the $7.95 softcore chair. And then we have Joan Bay's A Candid Conversation with a Dedicated Anti-War Activist and Folk Singer. So she's a um, prominent musician. She worked with Bob Dylan. Um, I think there was talks of her dating Steve Jobs back in some point in the 80s, late 90s. Um, but, a, you know, a historic career. Um, I personally don't know much of her music. I probably do, I guess in the third party sense I've probably heard it not known who's wrote it or who performed it but most likely I have so I might take a, a little deep dive on that and try and uh, listen to some of the music that she's wrote and, and sang uh, maybe you are taking a little too much of a chance on love and this is uh, makers of Forex Ramses Chic other line fine birth control products so this is really the era where the birth control kicks in obviously it was invented a little bit earlier than this but we start to see it being promoted in in more places pal mail cigarettes and this is a continuation of the interview give it a pause if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Joan Bays Playboy After Dark uh, is something special for summer so I always like these images here always make me feel good kind of looks like real sort of parties going on uh, what sort of man reads Playboy? Here he is. Not sure what he's got there. Bottle of something in his hand, I think. There's a couple of ladies looking over. And then we have Fiction by Erwin Shaw. Uh, Rich Man's Weather. Got a cartoon here. This is by Interlandy. And then we've got Reportage. This is by Jeffrey Norman. How 6,000 students met and talked and learned that you have to do more than meet and talk to save the environment. Um, so this is true. You know, when you want to do things and move things along, it does take some physical activity. It's all very well meeting and discussing and planning, but it's in the doing that we get things done. So this is why I admire people like Elon Musk and um, you know various other people along those lines who just have an idea, they run with it. Um, it may not be perfect, you know, using batteries in cars, for example, we know this is not sustainable long term because of the uh, minerals that are used, I think in particular cobalt, and you've got lithium as well, which are huge strip mining, I think, techniques. Um, but it's a step in the right direction, I guess. 
We've got this pictorial essay by C. Robert Jennings, Shaping Up for Old Calcutta, How the Techniques of Encounter Therapy Are Used to Precondition Performers for the Theatre's Nudist Experiment in Erotica. So, of course, a little pictorial here, all very arty and uh, performance-based. We have a refreshing alternative to the omnipresent four in hand, and this is Bal Brummel Attire, uh, Robert L. Green, Something a little bit different here, quite abstract, the artwork. And we've got Buck Brown, another cartoon. Uh, Man and Beast, a reasoned criticism of the fashionable contention that ethologists can unerringly understand and predict human behavior by observ observing that of lower animals. This is by Morton Hunt. So when people are making these comparisons, trying to predict human behavior from animal behavior, um, obviously there's some errors that can occur in that obviously quite obvious ones um, because we are very different to animals in behavior and intelligence so uh, article by Ken W Purdy here high performance driving schools may not turn you into a Moss or an Andretti but they'll teach you how to get the most out of your machine and yourself so as we see in the last few years we've had these high performance sports cars starting to appear in motorcycles and here it has the the ways that you should corner and turn. Uh, so this is a semester at Super Driver U. Uh, pre prepare for the worst, Harold. Uh, I only took along enough pills for the two-week cruise. I'm sure you can guess what kind of pills she's referring to. Uh, further up the organization, uh, this is an article by Robert Townsend, the author of the number one bestseller and former head of Avis continues his assault on the dehumanizing and unprofitable practices of big business which rings many bells um, with what's going on in the world today. There's lots of comparisons about business not being sustainable and uh, not ethical in many regards. It says, uh, and offers the executive echelon a handsome dividend of refreshingly iconoclastic commandments for getting down to the no-nonsense nitty-gritty of corporate health. Uh, Ralph Schoenstein, Nuclear Neighbor. And then we have Torrid Italian Beauty. Ford and De Tommaso have joined forces to create the Pantera, a cat swift road machine of sleek sensuality. And more cartoons here for you. And then we have our Playmate of the Month. Uh, this is Carol Willis. Um, it's unfortunate that she passed away about 18 months after this uh, photo shoot was done. She was involved in a automobile accident. I think she was only 21 years old. Uh, so it's always horrible when we get these ones come up. Um, here's her centerfold. You know, just just makes you think of, you know, how promising these kind of times are. And then obviously with car safety in this era, you know, 60s, 70s, it's still not great. Um, lots of uh, people killed in automobile accidents, but Yes, it's, uh, unfortunately, whenever you encounter them, it always just makes you think about how young people can die in certain situations, you know. Dadini, uh, do you really love me, or are you just infatuated with the fact that you sim simulate intercourse on stage with me seven times a week? Play Playboy Pad, striking sandcastle, a Manhattan bachelor architect builds a many-faceted beach house on Fire Island. So, not too sure about the look of this one. Um... It's okay, I guess, but uh, nothing that really stands out architecturally. There's not a kind of natural beauty to it, but, um, you know, it's a beach house, so I guess it's meant to be just a bit fun, perhaps a little bit impractical, but somewhere that you go with a lot of people. Alberto Vargas, uh, not one of his best pin-up artworks, but still good. Uh, Aza Beba, last train to limbo. Why were there no other passengers? Why didn't it seem to matter? Uh, everything you always wanted to know about television but were afraid to ask explained by Bend Masselink, uh, ripping the veil of secrecy from a taboo topic. Uh, a TV authority's frank replies to hitherto unanswered questions about man's favourite pastime point the way to greater viewing satisfaction parody. Conversation pieces here by Thomas Mario. Selected hors d'oeuvres to make your next cocktail party the talk of the town. So some various things, it looks like the caviar, 
Uh, what else do we have? Pates, etc. So, yeah, looking good. The Dolls of Beyond the Valley. Russ Meyer, the Cecil B. DeMille of the Skin Flicks, has stocked his screen sequel for the best-selling pop boy with the gorgeous creatures, including two of our own playmates and bizarre carryings on. So here he is here with Gina Dare. And here's some of the models that appear in his productions. So again, a nice, uh, quite lengthy pictorial actually. Um, lots here to look at. So feel free to give it a pause if there's any models that you recognize or that's why you come to this particular issue of the magazine to uh, catch a glimpse. On location, they were filming a television commercial in Manhattan when the enemy attacked, crying death to the manipulators by Thomas Baum. And Denham does it. An erstwhile workday uh, fabric takes a great fashion leap forward. This is by Rob L. Green. Um, we've got the Rob L. Classic there. Eric Sokol. Another cartoon. Anatomy, Anatomy of a Massacre, and this is article by Jess Frank Frosch, Frock. A military intelligence officer reveals and analyzes the convergence of forces, tensions, events, and decisions that lead to such horrors as the My Lai slaughter and the policy of silence that follows. So uh, the military, of course, has been involved in various massacres, you know, not just in Vietnam, but of course over the years in Gulf Wars and many other um things that we've had to do you know whenever there is war even in ukraine you see this now with ukraine and russia you know you, you go in to fight a war and what ends up happening is it's your comrades get killed around you and it ends up a, a war of revenge and that kind of thing and uh it's just the 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 general nature of humans unfortunately to get kind of retribution and revenge is a horrible thing um here we have maybe you can't afford a lamborghini but you can afford a lamborghini's tires this is pirelli so I think this is the Lamborghini yeah, P400 Miura. Really nice looking car. Um, we've got PSA. And no, I don't believe in love at first sight. I think we should wait until you take me home. So it looks like a real uh, Lothario here. In his uh, tux almost, his frilly tux. And then we have... Just some more uh, continuations of articles. John Dempsey cartoons here. You know his style by now. And uh, quite a few actually this month. Eric uh, Siegel here. Remember that rubbish we learned in high school about the human body being worth only 97 cents. And Philadelphia Club opens this fall. Now visit Playboy at 20 locations. This is the Playboy Club news. I need to come back to the Playboy Clubs at some point. We need to have a kind of special on those um, just to investigate the goings on and um, the eventual downfall. I think that might be quite a good video to do if we look at those in depth. But at the moment, the clubs are booming. And I was actually reading a little piece on Victor Lowndes who ran the London Playboy Club, had the casino there and the subsequent um, training house, which is called Stocks in Aldbury in Hertfordshire in the UK. And uh, Victor Lowndes was one of the highest paid executives um, in, in Britain at the time. And obviously had a, a great contract and working relationship with Playboy. Eventually he fell out with Hugh Hefner, partially, but um, I think they eventually kind of made up. And I think it was over um, Victor Lowndes' partner, which was uh, Martine Cole, I believe her name was. Uh, she was also a playmate. Uh, we have this cartoon here, which is quite interesting. Haven't I raped you somewhere before? Um, so, yeah, it's a an odd cartoon, an odd, an odd uh, caption on it as well. But, you know, Playboy is pushing the boundaries. That's what it does. Some more Playboy forum articles here. Or letters, sorry. Uh, I just hate the way men undress you with their eyes. And this is relevant to today, you know, when uh, women are walking around in quite skimpy kind of outfits and quite revealing things. And when people look, they get this surprise kind of um, attitude towards it. It's um, a very strange thing. But if you point that out, you're kind of cast as a villain in some sense. I've got John Dempsey here. 
uh, not too much left now I don't think as we head towards the end of the magazine it's not one of the best issues we have certainly the photography isn't kind of all that the cover's good um, but it seems like it's an issue that's been kind of almost thrown together a little bit perhaps they're waiting for interviews to be done and that kind of thing Beauty and the Beast, the best of everything, the girls, the fiction, the fact, the fun. That's the beauty of it all. Subscribe to Playboy today. Some more cartoons. I like this style of cartoon here. These ones are always good. So more subscription advertisements and then until Annie Fanny to finish off the magazine as usual feel free to give it a pause if you wanted to see any more and on the back page we've got a seven crown um so this is Seagram's whiskey uh next month we have Dr Paul Ehrlich uh, the outspoken population biologist and prophet of environmental apocalypse sets forth his views in a chilling playboy interview that's going to be an interesting one to read bunnies of 1970 11 pages of photographic accolades to an international array of cottontail beauties again that should be good um we've got rex reed with myra breckenbridge we have the last magician um this is by lauren isley um what else do we have playboy plays the bond market michael lawrence larry siegel is back uh, Ken W. Purdy with a sign, an iconic tale that explores a contest of wheels between a man and a priest. And just the wild profiles on the back page. So that's us done for this month. Um, let's say a pretty good issue. I like the cover. Uh, we'll see if this gets flagged up on YouTube's algorithm. Um, but I'll get that uploaded. And I'll see you on the next issue, which will be in a few days' time. <laughs>